Now we're going to look at the lone parent family, the future majority. And that's a question because I think when we look at the demographics and we see the increase in divorce, we see the increase also in single parented families and will that continue on? And so what we can look at is these trends in lone parent families and how are those trends move, moving in the directions that we see. And what are some of the various paths that people might take to single parenthood? We see examples of certainly in terms of divorce, we know that, but are there other paths to being a single parent family? And what, are, uh, what is the place of single parenthood in our family cycle? Now we've a long time seen that families include two parents and their children, but what now with this increased number of single parented families, what is that family cycle like? What is it, the implica implications on children and on the parent? What is the quality of life of the single parent family? Such as their economic stability, economic and social stability, and their welfare, including that of the children. And so this is the data seems to suggest some very specific things, and it's data, it's data based, and it's important to pay attention that you may not always agree, because you may be of a family of a single parent, and you may feel as if they've been highly successful. And it's not to say that that wouldn't have been the case, and that there aren't examples of families that have, but we'll see what the data says about the demographic of a single parent family. And the data would be suggestive of what is in fact happening with this larger group of families. So remember, you'll need to use your sociological imagination, the sort of distancing from your own personal perspective and taking a more public perspective. And then what is the difference about the very young single mother and the single father? Some of the evidence of you know, our concerns about single young single mom may not be bared out and a growing number of men wanting to be, or choosing to be, or ending up being single-parented fathers. All right, so I hope you find this chapter interesting as well in this area of the lone parent, the new majority. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna look at the trends of lone parenthood, but first a quick little definition. A mother or a father with no spouse or common law partner present living in a dwelling with one or two more children. Now when we think about the statistics here, there's been an increase in this population. In 2001, 15.7% of all census families were single-parented families. In 2011, that increased up to 16.3. In addition, eight of the 10 lone parent families are headed by women. Many families spend much of their time as in some form of single parent family before, between two families, or even after. So when we think in terms of the economic survivability, we've had a number of different things that have happened or could, have, could occur, and we look at this as being a highest risk for living in poverty for female lone parent families. Working lone uh, mothers experience a great deal of tension juggling their work, family, and daycare. Many lone mothers are discouraged from working by the lack of availability and affordable daycare. Uh, some ways of getting off social assistance are through upgrading or completing one's education or even finding an adequate job. The National Child Benefit is aimed at reducing child poverty and reducing the overlap in social assistance programs associated to encourage parents to find jobs. Now when we think in terms of why where does it come from? How do we get lone parent families? Well, there's an, increase in un there's an increase in unmarried mothers, and children and marriage are regarded kind of separately here. Increase in the divorce rate and becoming a lone parent may be a result of either not marrying, a divorce, or a death of a spouse. Lone parenthood can end for various reasons too. A remarriage, cohabitation, change of custody, or independence of the children. Many teen mothers marry and enter into common law relationships young. Uh, divorced women with young children are least likely to enter a union. And as a group, widows are the oldest when they become single parents and stay lone parents the longest. Teen pregnancies become uh, comes the most comes when most young people are struggling with all their own issues of independence and family of origin. 
they're less likely to be able to make meaningful financial and social contributions to rearing their own children. Assisted reproductive technology allows older women to have a child without, without a partner. These um, parents or these women without partners are often better able to support themselves and children since they have, are more likely to have completed education and established careers. And reiterating this, you know, the group as alone parents have the lowest total income. In 2008, the average lone parent family made 42300 That was female lone parent family, $42,300. And that was about 70% of what male lone parent families earned. And so when we think in terms of those differences, it's not surprising that we associate with lone parenting a higher risk of poverty. Housing is the single largest expense for most single mothers and may be difficult to find. Single mothers are more likely than others to live in low-income areas for longer periods of time. Most cannot buy a house, they tend to live in apartments, row housing, or co-op housing. For the benefit of children, space is important. Backyard space and play area space. Proximity to schools medical services, stores, and other needed services. Low-income areas are not always, low, uh, not always close or convenient to these services. Low-income housing areas, areas have issues of privacy and stigma associated with them for both the mom and the children. Both lone father and mothers have high rates of mood and substance disorders when married. The majority of single parents report adequate contact with others with a minority reporting that they're being uh, that they are lonely social support is significantly reduced uh, significantly reduces the likelihood of these disorders now you can look at social support in two ways in two areas one would be the overall supportiveness of a society and the other would be the immediate source of emotional and practical support that you might receive from friends and family now the next few slides we're going to look at will be risks that children have um, living in lone parent families. We'll start off looking at school achievement and employment. Now I'm going to emphasize, and I may repeat it again, that what I'm going to be remarking on here will be data based on statistics of families and families and their children. It's not to say that we won't know people and have lived in families whose parents have provided us, whose single parent family has provided us a far better environment than what I'm about to express is oftentimes statistically the case. So please bear that in mind. School achievement, and we're going to look at and employment possibilities, that this is on a continuum, so there's more like a continuum of aspects of adjustments. Not every child will fall within the extremes. There will be a lot of children that will fall along a continuum of this. On average, Children from single-parented um, families don't do as well in school as two-parented families. They're more likely to drop out, be less qualified for post-secondary. They're more likely as adults to receive welfare support and less likely to own a home. Children growing up in divorced homes are likely to start work earlier than those in two-parented homes are. Now we think in terms of family life, there's two aspects of family life that are affected by lone parenthood. Relationships within the single family and the relationships within families formed by the adult children of single families. So individuals who grew up in a, in a lone parent family because of divorce are more likely to have formed partnership couples at an earlier age themselves. Relationships with single parented family, well we what influences the children the most is parenting styles. They tend to get less support and there tends to be more unresolved issues. Single parents are less likely to be emotionally supportive of their children. They have harsher discipline and less parental supervision. And again, this is in part due to the degree of stress associated with balancing so many elements by themselves as opposed to having a partner to support. And these issues, these issues of is not solely single parent issues. It is so much more complex. However, statistically, this does bear out. Some other explanations that account for the differences between children from one parent families and two parents is, and we have to emphasize, is the significance of the result of economic hardship. The quality of parenting may have um, 
an effect on 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 effect by stress can be create many problems. The loss of contact with the residential parent when a child doesn't have contact with the parent that's no longer there can have a huge impact on that child. Uh, witnessing conflict in the family can lead to emotional and behavioral problems. Uh, the problems with these explanations is that they don't apply to all families and they provide only partial answers. Uh, lone parent families are a varied group with quite different histories. Sometimes they look at cohort, which is that image on the bottom left-hand corner, which looks at the demographics and what what is the group experience like, and even that doesn't give very good, clear information about the experience. I will touch base on teen mothers. Now, by definition, a teen a teenage mother is a mother, a woman who has um, her first birth under the age of 20. And one of the things that's worth noting is there's no epidemic epidemic of teen births. In 2010, just 4% of all Canadian births were teenage mothers. Um, more common uh, teenage births are more common among Aboriginal um, people in the, as compared to the rest of the um, Canadian population. Um, concern over teen births focused on fewer younger ones. That is, there's fewer children under the age of 50 15 having children, and more the, the um, rather than the older majority, which would be the 18 and over, which are having children. Uh, not finishing their f growth physically for those younger kids, not having the uh, least amount of education, and seem likeliest for poverty. Uh, the youngest teen mothers often live at home with their parents. Once a baby is born, the teen mother may have difficulty returning to school. Even when teen mothers marry, Rarely do they improve their financial status because husbands tend their husbands tend to have poor prospects. They too haven't finished education and haven't necessarily gone on to post-secondary either. Single father. This is a newer growing area. The proportion of lone parent fathers is growing. In 2011, nearly one in five single parents were men mainly because mothers are less frequently being awarded sole custody of children following the breakup of a union. Uh, men tend to become single parents in the middle to late years of their life cycle. Few are in teens or in their 20s. Children of lone parent fathers tend to be a bit older too. Single fathers, more so than single mothers, are expected to be the sole economic support for their families and tend to spend less time with their children, their younger children, than do single mothers. So what does the future hold? Probably an increase of single-parented families, especially as a result of divorce. We'll probably see a continued level in poverty, um, as high single parent, uh, high among single-parent families, and we'll probably see the impact on children's lives still be significant until there's uh, practical and real changes that can happen in the benefit of children. And fathers will continue to be active in this area of lone parenting. And so family, in terms of the future of the lone parent, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon your perspective, it's likely to stick around for some time. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye now.